the previous video, you've been shown how you can use the Lisa dataset with information on where companies are, what they do, and how many people work there. So now you have this large data set with a lot of points and you're interested in finding patterns in the data. That is not always simple. As you can see, I'm currently wearing a point layer shirt myself, and it's not always obvious how the points relate to each other. In this video, I will be showing you how to create a heat map. However, heat maps often don't tell the whole story. Patterns can be found in different ways too. One of the patterns we will be looking at is clustering and see if we can find clusters of shops in a certain point layer. There are more ways to cluster data, but one useful way is to use distance between points as a measure. The case we're looking at is shopping areas, but you can apply this to very different situations as well. In another video, we'll be creating a separate grid with weighted values from this point layer, thus in the third option to make some kind of density map. Let's first start with the heat map. Currently, we're looking at the LISA data set. It's not the complete LISA data set. As you can see, I've applied a filter already. Let's have a look at the filter. And you can see that the filter here says afdeling is detailhandel. That means um, that the category we're using here is that it's just shops. So if you look at Delft, you can see that there's a lot of shops, especially in the city center and there's a few around town. We can apply a heat map to this data set. But first let's make a copy of this data set so that we can combine the actual points with the heat map afterwards. So I duplicate the layer. In this case, it will open a second view to this data set completely similar to the first one, as you can see here. Next, we're going to apply the heat map as a visualization tool. So we're changing the single symbol and we're changing it to heat map. Now you immediately see some kind of a heat map here, but it doesn't really show you what we want because you do not see the background layer. So first we go to layer rendering panel. We open layer rendering and we set the blending mode to something else. And multiply is my personal favorite here. As you can see, you combine the uh, color ramp from the heat map with everything that's underneath it. So we have here the color ramp and it's in black and white. Uh, this might be interesting to do this in red. And you can see the density in the city center. There is more shops here than elsewhere. And there's a few here as well. Now this first result will probably not be exactly what you're looking for. So we have a few extra parameters here that you can play around with a bit to make it more your personal heat map. One of the things we could do is we could enlarge the radius of, of every uh, point. So what a heat map does is it automatically clusters points and creates a kind of a, well, the, the heat map effect around it. Um, in this case, you can see the city center of Delft uh, pushes all the other uh, shops a bit to the background because there are so many shops here together. Uh, the maximum value parameter you can set, for example, to let's say 25. So if 25 shops are together, that is already a large um, group. So if we change this parameter, you can see that there is 25 map, um, shops together here, but there's also probably in this area, there's 25 shops together. Even in Pijnacker, there are 25 shops together here in this area. Tinkering with this parameter will give you new insights. For example, if you say that 10 is a nice number for a number of shops already to have as a group, you see that in this case, that will give you limited insight. But if you zoom in a little more and see that there are shops here, there are shops here, um, as we know, this is the Gamma and the other shops around that. Uh, but also here, there's, there's a cluster of 10 shops at least here. So this gives you a different insight. You can weigh these points, not by the number, um, the number of shops, but for example, again, for the people working there. 
looking at the full time people working there, um, maybe you could change the parameter a bit. Um, because here, in this case, number of people working is of course larger than the number of shops. As you can see here now, there's one point here that really stands out. And looking at the people working here, we could also try to enlarge this number again. And you can see this one still pops out. So what is happening here? Now let's have a look at the point data again. And you can see there's just one point here underneath. And that is, of course, the IKEA. And at the IKEA, there's, of course, there's a lot of people working here. Let's have a look at that. There is um, six, over 600 people working at IKEA. So yeah, that, that does really mess up your data here a bit. So maybe this is not the best way to make a heat map of this area. So let's get back to the unweighted number of shops again and change this parameter to 25. So you can see the city center and the Vorhof popping up again. By tweaking these three parameters that we have, we can really alter the look of the heat map. And you might have noticed that it is kind of a, a search. It, it's a trial and error process. And it always is with heat maps. You have to find the right combination of the settings for the parameters to make it your own heat map. And that tells the story that you really want to tell with this data. Another way of looking at it is through clustering. So we've seen our heat map and what it does. Uh, so let's switch off the heat map now. And I've made a copy of the data set. It is not the complete country. As you can see, it just involves the part of The Hague, Rotterdam uh, and around it. There are a few uh, ways of uh, clustering. DBSCAN clustering is one of those. As you can see, it's recently used. So let's have a look at that. We use the Lisa selection uh, layer for that. We can see here there is something uh, called a minimum cluster size. Uh, in our example of um, shops, that means that five shops or more together form a cluster. Now the distance between the clustered points, that is an interesting one. For shops, you could argue that 100 meters might be a good distance. You can close a gap of 100 meters and still consider it a cluster. You could also say that if it's further away than 25 meters, a different cluster starts. This is very arbitrary and um, I'm not sure if there is anything in the literature on this, but let's now go for 50 meters as a kind of a safe distance between the different shops. Otherwise, I'll just leave it as it is and the cluster ID will be the field name for the cluster itself. We'll make a temporary layer out of that and uh, let's first check out how this works. So here we have our clusters and we can style the clusters now and we can use categorized styling and of course use the cluster ID field for that. You see there's a, quite a few um, different clusters. Um, there is uh, actually a lot of clusters. There's 549 clusters. But there's also one value called all others. And the all others means that a shop is not in a cluster. So let's switch that one off and zoom in a bit to an area that we know. Let's go back to Delft again. And here you can now define certain clusters. As you can see, this is one cluster, uh, the shops in the city center. But there's also um, around the Binnenwaterslot, there is a few that are not considered within the cluster because this gap here is larger than 50 meters. And the shops in the Breestraat are also separate cluster. Um, again, the gap between the nearest other shop, shops in this one is over 50 meters. Um, here at the Popshausenlaan, even there you see that there's a few shops here that are not considered within this cluster. And opposite the road, same thing. So it might be that the 50 meters is a bit too short. But for now, let's uh, see that we have clusters here. So will the result be very different if we run the clustering algorithm again? 
but then with 100 meters. Well, let's check it out. Let's do that fast. Uh, we're using the Lisa selection again. Here, the maximum number will be 100. We'll do something similar. Again, changing to categorized on the field for the cluster ID. Switching off all other values and see if different uh, clusters show up. As you can see, especially in the city center, um, the cluster that is the shops in the uh, in the city center, uh, that cluster is a bit larger now. Um, the shops here at the Papsausalan, the Vorhof, they're also one cluster now. And in, um, for example, a city like Rotterdam, uh, you can see that there are different um, larger clusters now, as this is just one big continuous stream of shops uh, if you use the 100 meters. If you use the 50 meters, you see that almost all street crossings are hard barriers between the different clusters. So what can this do for you? Well, you can get new insights again from the data. You can see where uh, a certain type of, in this case, shop is um, clustering together. Um, you could do something similar on a larger scale for different types of industries. But of course, that is very much dependent on what you'd like to study. Now let us get back to Delft once more and see if the clusters that we have created now, the 100 meter clusters, if they in some way combine uh, to our heat map. And as you can see, the combination of those two, the clustering with the heat map, gives a really good insight in how shops are distributed all over the city.